Hello, Chill Computer Guy. We are here at Bitwig Studio. Today we are going to talk about where do you start? Where to start is oftentimes a little overwhelming, and a lot of times if you don't have a, a, a pattern or a particular way of doing things, you'll end up with a bunch of loose ends, and you'll end up with such massive levels of disorganization with your song that you you can't finish it. Now, a lot of these things are are, are things that I personally run into when I'm creating music. This particular tutorial is going to feature layered editing, chord progression, your melody, and then we're going to throw a little rhythm in there just to kind of get. And what I like to do is lay everything out on a piano. Don't even start on sound design until you have a good chord progression, a good melody, some kind of a hook. Then you start to work on the sound design. That's just me personally. Now here's our scales on our master channel. We have the natural minor, the melodic minor, the Locrian, the Major, the Dorian, the Phrygian, the Lydian, and the Mixolydian. Now all of these are pushed to the left of the starting gate and uh, all these are laid out with no sharps or flats. In other words, all the white keys. Now once you decide what key to put your song in, you want to hit Control A and you want to move these to whatever key your song is going to be in. And then of course when you do that, it's going to push those over to the sharps and flats, but by doing this, when you fold this thing down, you're going to be dialed in. In other words, you're going to have all the notes of your particular scale. Now, this is five octaves worth. You can go, you know, as many octaves as you want. I just like five octaves. That's a good amount for me. And then you can always uh, transpose these up and down uh, if you're working on a bass or, or a high-end sound there. Okay, so what we have is a reference here. What we've done is we've taken these notes here, we've pulled them out for 16 bars and created a reference. Now this reference track here, like I say, is 16 bars. Now if you go into layered editing, this is where the magic happens. Layered editing. Hit this little paddle lock. That's going to drop the opacity of that reference track. In other words, you can put MIDI notes right on top of this. You're not going to affect the track. And this track is not connected to anything. It's just, it's, it's, it's literally just a MIDI clip that's sitting on top of nothing. But it's a reference. Now, if I hit Control and select a couple of these, you can see there's my melody, which happens to be a bass line in my case. And then here's a uh, chord progression right on top. And then by hitting the, the pen tool, you are setting the loop marker to the length of whatever that clip is in your clip launcher. So this is all based on your clip launcher. So this is when naming your clips becomes really, really crucial because when you come down here to layered editing, they're going to say Untitled 1, Untitled 2, Untitled 3, Untitled 4, and that's not a lot of uh, a help. Now another thing with Bitwig Studio, you'll see here on the right all these little icons. Um, you can close off everything. You can close everything down. There's no way to close the faders down, which really irritates me because, you know, you can close, like I say, you can close all this shit down. Everything, you know. But you cannot close those faders down. Now, why would I want those faders closed down? Because when I pull this all the way up, I put my MIDI grid up here, and I pull this all the way up, I'm left with the faders. What I really want is my clips. See, now if I push this up, my clip launcher disappears, and I'm left with my faders. I want to be able to turn these faders off and then have just my clip launchers, you know, just my clip launchers up here, and be able to turn my faders off. Now, if you go down here to the edit panel, which is where most people would do the majority of their piano roll and their MIDI editing is in the edit panel. That's what it's for. The problem with the edit panel, again, is I have no access to my clips. Now you'll see there's this icon, I have access to my instruments and access to my mixer, but maybe another icon that would open up the clip launcher down here. You could say, well, you can go into the arranger and do it that way, because if you go into the arranger and then you close down your arranger and open up your clips, just your clips, you know, you have them up there and you can do it that way. But again, I do not like to touch the arranger until I'm ready to actually arrange my track. I, and so I've been working mainly in the mix panel because I honestly think it's very good to build the parts of your song in your clip launcher before you start doing your arrangement. Now, if you do your arrangement, you're going to end up ahead of yourself. That's And again, these are all just personal. Uh, this is just my personal way of doing things. I'm a big believer in, in, in basically putting together your track 
in the clip launcher before you even touch the arrange panel. So the idea of being in the arrange panel when I'm not actually arranging horrifies me. So again, we're going to go back to the reference as it was. There's our uh, there's our reference track, and so you can see everything is within everything is within scale. We have our uh, our bass track. We have our chord progression. Let's go ahead and just play this. Oh, and we have a little bit of a beat. Look at that. We have a little bit of a beat. Two four. We got a four four on the kick drum and a two four on the snare drum, and then eighth note hi hats. Just you know, so we'll have something going on there. Let's go ahead and play this. Now you'll see it's going to appear as that it's looping at one bar, but it's really not. It's all about this loop marker, okay? If I click on my B minor, that's a three bar. That's my bass line because it's blue. It's all colors. Colors, uh, I put my bass is blue. The drums are green. Any leads are going to be red or orange depending on where they're at in the frequency range. That's just the way I do it personally. You'll see that that changes the length of my bar. And then you can actually visibly see the bar now turning. It's going to appear as if this, or this, this chord progression is out of sync, but it's not because when I'm on my bass line, it's only three bars long, which is kind of, that's not a good thing. It's just the last little part of this bass line I'm not very excited about, so... But um, it's always good to make these either 2, 4, or what, and odd numbers when you're creating your stuff because what's going to happen is this is going to loop around and you're going to catch the end of, because you can see the uh, the chords are now 4 bars. Bass is 3 bars, and then of course the drums, which again, I need to title this. See, that's not titled. Yeah, you got to deselect everything. Now if you turn it back on, you'll see you get your reference, your chords, and your beat. And then you want to, of course, lock up your reference. That'll lower the opacity. That way you can see what's going on here. The pen tool is going to reflect the loop marker. So if I play this, you're going to visually only see one. This is continuing on. It doesn't visually appear so because you're just looking at the clip. The clip is one bar long, okay? But it's playing on. Hard to wrap your head around. But it's what makes Bitwig Studio and layered editing and just so far above everything else. And this same thing goes for automation. The automation can extend past the clip. And if you're looking at just the loop marker, it's going to appear as if that automation is not looping. But in fact, it is because it's longer than the actual loop. It's a little, it's kind of some abstract thinking there. I've worked on this song for maybe 10 minutes. What I did is I laid down a simple little uh, bass melody and then a chord progression that works. Something that, that I, I, I can see myself uh, once I get into sound designing and then I start to, to work that amp envelope, that attack and that release. That's what's really, really going to... And so I highly recommend um, using this technique where you lay out your scales and then also you can see to the left here, this is all the possible chords for that particular uh, for that particular scale and so all you got to do is highlight all these and then change see you're, you're in key F because Lydian is all the white keys in F you can bump that up bump that up let's say I go up to G okay so now we're in G Lydian and now you can see if I zoom in here that's gonna bump some of those up into sharps and flats now once you fold this down you can see that it's just gonna show the notes in that uh, in that G Lydian in this particular case. Anyway, the camera just cut out. That must mean it's time to go. Uh, please subscribe, comment, give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks.